Hey everybody, it is Gerda here and I wanted to pop by and say hello. Hope you are having an amazing Wednesday thus far. My Wednesday has been pretty awesome. I have literally just hopped off a two hour panel discussion within my private practice success academy and i was just feeling so energized um, afterwards that i thought i'm gonna hop straight on here and tell you a bit about it uh, because i hate for you to be missing out on this type of content so what we did is uh, as i said it was a panel discussion so normally within the academy we have a skill session at the start of each month where myself or a um, well-selected, well-chosen guest speaker comes and presents something new, you know, it's skill space, so it's a, a tactic, uh, it's content, it's tools, resources, templates, etc. to the community. But today we took a bit of a different approach to it and we did a panel discussion. So we had four people on the panel, myself, of course, uh, Chelsea, who runs my two Brisbane practices, uh, who's my principal psychologist, my Halo co-founder. We also had another practice owner from New South Wales and a practice owner from Western Australia. So it was the four of us. And the topic of today's discussion was contracting versus employing. Oh, what a juicy topic. And I can't tell you, as a business coach and mentor, I've got so many people reaching out to me, often saying, Gerda, I've been employing at my practice predominantly for the last couple of years, but I've been thinking of moving to contracting. And then they give me a long list of reasons why they want to make the switch. Similarly, I've got people that reach out to me saying, Gerda, I've been contracting for a long time and I really feel that I need to change the model to employment. And they give me a long list of reasons. Now, the thing is, in the majority of these situations, the problem is not the model. The problem is that a model was chosen, um, but the model isn't being operationalized properly. However, you need to start by choosing the right model, right? The model that's going to fit you, your vision for the practice, what you want to achieve, etc., etc. So I thought it's a really great discussion to have to hear from four people running a business that has had experience in both contracting and employing and to hear from them firsthand what do you think is the pros and the cons of contracting and what do you think and what have you experienced as the pros and cons of employing and i wanted to have four people from various places and also we had more than one discipline, so it weren't all psychology, predominantly psychology, but OT as well. Um, and the one practice um, actually had more than OT, had multiple different types of disciplines in there. So I wanted to hear from multiple people and also start to see what is those commonalities in the cons? What is commonalities in the pros? Uh, what does this all mean for us? It was so good. It was so good to hear from people, to see the commonalities, to see how for some people a pro is actually a con and vice versa. Mm, very interesting, right? So if you want to be part of these types of discussions, I do want to invite you to reach out to me. You can um, you know, email me at Gerda M at private-practice-success.com. Um, right now, we do have space in the PPS Academy for a few more practices to join. And yes, I said practices because your enrollment is for your practice. It's not just for you as a practice owner. You know, if you only want to enroll yourself, that's perfectly fine. But you do have the option to add another four people to the Academy for the one enrollment fee. Because I know that you can't do it all yourselves. I know you want to, but I will be encouraging you to have, for example, a senior person at the front desk that might be a practice manager also in the academy learning stuff so you don't have to teach them everything, right? Or a team leader, a clinical team leader, or maybe it's a clinical supervisor. Maybe it's a principal psychologist. Maybe it's your, your person doing your books. I don't mind who you select. But it is so important for me to not only help you, but also help you help your team and create a support team that can support you without you having to do all the teaching and all the training. So really, the PPS Academy is a great uh, professional development opportunity, not only for yourself, 
but also for the support people you have in your practice. And yes, a lot of people join the academy and it's only them. And I love when I get those emails over time where they go, hey, I now have a practice manager or hey, I now have a clinical team leader as a result of the growth they've achieved. And they're now also coming into the academy so they can support their practice owner. But anyway, this wasn't about the academy per se. This was also about letting you know that, you know, when you have those moments of questioning your model, I would also recommend you sit and make your own list of pros and cons because a lot of the times the problem is not the model. It is also the way it's operationalized, as I said, the way it's implemented. But sitting with the pros and cons list out of your own experience will really help. Now, if you've only contracted and never employed, it's hard. It's going to be really hard for you to do that comparison. Similarly, if you've only employed and never contracted, again, it's going to be hard. And, you know, deciding to change your model is huge. It's really, really huge. Now, this all being said, there's nothing wrong with having a hybrid model, right? Where you have contractors and employees, but when you have a hybrid model, it is more important than ever for you to know how to operationalize now, not one, but two models at your practice. You cannot treat your employees like contractors and you cannot treat your contractors like employees. So that becomes even more tricky, very doable, very doable, but you need to be mindful of that as well. And of course, that's what I'm here for, to help and support you with stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna love and leave you my kitties. Um, well, my one child that's still in um, primary school will be home pretty soon. Have an amazing rest of your day. Remember, I'm here to help you build a practice you cannot stop smiling about. So do reach out, um, you know, don't try and do it alone. Why would you? Accept the help, accept the support. I'm here. Speak soon. Bye.